Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Friday, today's guests, including Paul Dolan, standing by to talk World Cup soccer, brought to you by Langley Chrysler. Enjoy no-hassle three-day returns and 30-day exchanges in all used vehicles so you can make sure what you get is just right for you. Don't just love your car. Don't just love your car. Love buying it at langleychrysler.com. Uh, just ahead of Paul Dolan, uh, Delaney's OK Tire and Langley in inbox. This just in. We're talking maple syrup yep. before the break. Antoine Roussel has a maple syrup farm. Farm Where? Canuck. Uh, I'm not sure. Quebec. I, I, I remember he uh, brought some for the whole team once. I don't remember that story. I don't remember that. I want to check but, that. But uh, we've had more than one uh, text, so it's it, something's there. They don't know the name of the uh, syrup company. No. Maybe, maybe Dolly does. Roussel well, Farms. Fourth line uh, syrup. Well, oh, that's Russell Farms. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? I typed in Roussel Maple Syrup Farm, and I thought it was here in BC. It's oh, good to see. I'm, uh, but it uh, came I'm not the only one having a tough day. Dolly uh, joins us now. He played for Canada, of course, at the 1986 uh, World Cup. Canada losing yesterday in uh, Costa Rica 1-0. Dolly, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? Hey, buddy. Uh, not a big maple syrup fan. More <laughs> of a fruit guy on my pancakes, but uh, yeah. ready to talk soccer anyway. I understand you're the only person on the planet who had North Macedonia upsetting Italy. Have I got that right? <laughs> I've actually been to Macedonia. I, I almost find that rare enough as don't we played against Macedonia in the most remote place in the history of the world, Strumatka, not even in Skopje, the uh, capital. They're a good quality team, but mm. oh, you saw the stats, 16 corners to none, uh, 32 shots to six, I think I it was, and yep. just that one... It's it's absolutely incredible. It's funny now because we're qualifying on Sunday, I guess, instead of last night, Canada. But to, to think back of all the people down on Commercial Drive in Vancouver who kind of dismissed Canadian soccer. Now it's back-to-back -back World Cups that Italy's missing. And, of course, Canada is not only going to the World Cup, but we're going to make some hay when we're there. I'm sure of it. I, I don't know how you feel about this, Paul, but you can say what you want about Italy getting knocked out. And, you know, there's a lot of people who love that in any sport, to see the big dog get knocked out. World Cup's not the same without them no, in it. I, I agree. And ideally, you'd want Italy and Portugal. That was never going to happen because those two were going to meet, supposedly, yeah. until North Macedonia had other ideas. You hope that Portugal will beat uh, North Macedonia now, I think, anyway, again, yeah. for a World Cup. But... It's uh, it's a big mess now again, like eight years without Italy. Uh, hopefully they're there next time when they're wearing Adidas, though. We're picking uh, them up out oh there. Oh, my God. <laughs> a shameless plug. Uh, your takeaway from yesterday's game in, in Costa Rica, 1-0 Canadian loss. I liked what John Herdman said after the game. It's almost as if he's more proud of that performance than any of the other previous qualifiers. And it's hard to, to argue with that, particularly the second half when you're down a man and you're absolutely storming the fort. It was one way traffic. Even the counterattacks that you'd expect in a situation like that, being a man down and having everybody press forward, you'd think there'd be more going the other way. There's really just that one opportunity that uh, Tiba kind of got back and, and threw the guy off and Milan stood big and made the save. But it was, an absolute domination. Taylor Navis, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, the PSG goalkeeper, had to make a couple of big saves. And, of course, the, the woodwork got in the way a couple of times. But I'm proud of the way that Canada played, the way that they you know, were so resilient, uh, going a man down away from home for more than an hour in a difficult place uh, under extreme uh, situation. I think Costa Rica was afraid. And when's the last time we saw yeah. any team – in CONCACAF, never mind one of the powers of CONCACAF who have been to back-to-back -back World Cups recently, uh, be afraid of Canada in their own building, <laughs> up a man. So I was proud of the way they played. Yes, we didn't get the final result we wanted to qualify, uh, but it does set us up nicely to do it on home soil on Sunday. Paul, the emotions of a game up and down. Mark Anthony Kay, uh, shoulder to shoulder, the bump, he gets it. Uh, your thoughts on that? It's embarrassing, but uh, you can't get yourself in that situation. Now, that's the fact of the matter. We all know, especially in CONCACAF, that there's going to be an eye on things like that. 
the first one is a definite yellow, close to a red. You know, you could call it an orange card, uh, the one that he gets uh, kind of saved by VAR. The referee goes and has a look. I think that was correct in the end, that if the referee gave the yellow and there wasn't clear and obvious, um, you know, uh, violent conduct there, which I, I, I think is correct, it should have been a yellow. But when you're on a yellow, you've yeah. got to do everything you can to avoid getting involved. That's it. He gets hacked down. I watched the, the play again. Mark Anthony gets hacked down, but not that badly. In fact, I, I think the referee might have got it right that it wasn't a foul and Canada kept possession. But then you've got to stay away from it because those types of players, they're coy. They know what's happening. You get near them, of course they're going to flop. I hate it. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. But the onus is on Mark Anthony K there to not get involved. Uh, you brought it up, the diving and the, the, the flopping around. Um, Paul, it's, it's always been a criticism of soccer. Uh, was it overdone last night by Costa Rica? Yeah, but again, you know what's happening. So uh, you, you can't beat them, you join them, that type of thing, or yeah. uh, you play smart. And Canada, to this point, has played smart. Again, I like what John said post-game as well, is that the soccer gods have kind of smiled on Canada through a lot of this. Uh, there, you know, the old adage... You make your own luck if you're a good team, and Canada's been excellent. They've been the best team in the region, and that's why they top the table right now. Of course, uh, you know, they wanted to go undefeated, um, and they were playing relatively well, I think, in the game against Costa Rica before the red card, but not not great. But uh, you know what you're up against. You're up against teams that are desperate and will do absolutely everything they need to do to win free kicks, and even the free kick that led to the goal was, I think, a bad call. Yeah. But as much as it's difficult, you got to put the head down and get on with it. And uh, when there's an opportunity to avoid that type of conflict, you know, Mark Anthony K has to do it. Yeah. Until there's an embellishment uh, penalty like there is uh, in the Rule. NHL. Rule. Yeah. Um, Paul, uh, quickly, uh, Whitecaps, zero wins in four matches to start the season. They host Sporting KC uh, next Saturday, April uh, 2nd. I think I've got that right. What have you noticed so far? Well, it's not quite the same team that we saw at the end of last year. And whether that's because Ryan Gold isn't fully up to speed just yet, I think that is a key factor. You know, obviously, they miss, uh, miss Maxime Crapeau. Not to blame anything on Thomas Lassalle, but he was your MVP last year. Yep. And to have lost him and not really made it up with any players, I like what I've seen from Tristan Blackman in the back. I think he's been pretty good. Uh, but I was hoping that we might see a little bit more. And, and Axel Schuster will say that, he wants to get the right players in there if they're bringing in new blood rather than uh, do it quickly. And I agree with that as well. So I think what we're saying is that, you know, in the early going here, it's not been quite as uh, what we expected or hoped for, but they've also played some difficult teams in difficult places. And I think, you know, coming into the next few games that are at home, the next couple of games anyway, that um, I, th I think they'll get home points and start to build that momentum again. Paul, I'm not sure who's calling you right now, but I'm going to take a guess. It's probably Joey Kenward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he, throws, he throws a few emails to me and texts during the game as well to give me some some uh, random stats. Which so, is, <laughs> I'm not the only one then. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's good. It, it, yeah. it helps my preparation. I'll just let Joey do all my show prep next game. <laughs> yeah, except he should do it before the match, yeah. not during. <laughs> There's the problem. We love Joey. Hey, Paul, thanks for doing this. All right, fellas. Take care. Okay.